Hi all, this is Shweta Reddy, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering from RMK College of Engineering and Technology. Today, in this video of wireless communication, we are going to see the working of rake receiver. In the previous video, we have covered the introduction part, multi-path as well as we have seen what is rake receiver. So in this video, we are going to cover the working of rake receiver in detail. So in the previous video, we have discussed uh, what is rake receiver. Uh, so to brush up, a rake receiver is a radio receiver designed to counter the effects of this multipath fading. So this block diagram was also explained in the previous video. Kindly do refer that. We will see the detailed working of a rake receiver in the next coming slide. So coming to M branch rake receiver. In the previous video, we have discussed about the block diagram of this M branch rake receiver. So in this particular slide, we are going to see the working of this M branch rake receiver in detail. So the rake receiver uh, uses several baseband correlators uh, to individually process several signal multipath components. This we have uh, already discussed that uh, is uh, we will be having uh, different baseband correlators associated to different multipath component. These M correlators or sub receivers in this rake receiver are called fingers. So there is a special name given to them called fingers and the, and the, rake, and the rake name is also being special or important just as we have uh, our rake guarding tool in order to collect those uh, grass pieces in the similar manner. Uh, rake receiver also tries to collect the actual signal from the available multipaths. So that is the reason why the name rake receiver comes into the picture. So now each correlator did extra time shifted version of the original CDMA transmission. That is, uh, we have already discussed that each correlator would have been uh, tuned to specific time shifted version of the original CDMA transmission. That is, your correlator uh, 1 would have been tuned to tau 1 and it will be having that particular time delay from transmission to reception at a particular time instant. That is tau 1. That is tau 1 uh, we are uh, receiving as the first multipath component and uh, tau 2 we are receiving as the second multipath component and tau m we are receiving as m multipath component and so on. So individual correlator would have been tuned to time shifted version of the original transmitted CDMA signal. So now uh, each finger of the rake receiver correlates to the portion of the signal which is at least delayed by one chipping time TC with the other fingers. That is uh, uh, the most important point we need to understand is that our correlators are only going to function well if the multipath components are highly correlated. Just because if this is not being the case, then in that particular case, all the multipath components will be going to club together or they will uh, going to distort each other. So it is our assumption uh, as well as it, it is observed that if the multipath component is having at least the time delay of TC or greater than that, they are highly uncorrelated. So while considering this particular fact only, we are in the state to collect all the multipath components. So now the output of uh, each correlator uh, is denoted as Z1, Z2 and up to Zm. And they are being weighed with alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha m to provide better estimate of the transmitted signal. Uh, so this we have already discussed that each correlator output would have been denoted as Z1, Z2 and up to Zm. And they are actually being weighed with the specific component that is alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha m and so on. So that we are in a state to get better estimate of the transmitted signal provided by the single multipath component. Suppose uh, if we do not process this sort of operation and we are only considering the single multipath component and if due to some reason the multipath component is going to have lower SNR, that is lower signal to noise ratio due to the bad characteristics of the channel. So in that particular case, we will be going to get very bad signal reception as well. Whereas if you are considering this multipath phenomena and we are observing that all those multipath component, then there might be some chance that only a single path is going through a bad channel characteristics. But other paths may not or other paths may have much better SNR. Since all these multipath components, uh, we we are going to carry this is going to carry the same amount of information, 
so we will be going to club them or we will be going to consider the contribution of all those multipath components and we are going to get the combined signal so that combined signal obviously uh, we are going to have uh, sorry obviously it is going to have much better characteristics in comparison to your single multipath component so this is the thing uh, that we are going to exploit in your rake receiver so obviously the question comes into your mind is that how we are going to weight them or how we are going to provide uh, weighing to these different multipath components so the phenomena is quite simpler so if the received power of uh, or the signal to noise ratio that is uh, if the received power or snr is small then the correlator will be assigned to small weighing factor and if the received power or snr is high then it we then we are going to uh, give it to the larger weighing factor so then the weighing coefficients are normalized to output signal power of the correlator in order to get the actual signal at the output so now we are going to perform normalization so this is the formula for normalization that is alpha m will be equal to zn square upon summation of m starting from 1 to m uh, zm square so the first multipath component alpha 1 is equal to z1 square by z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square till zm square the second multipath component alpha 2 is equal to z2 square by z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square till zm square and the third multipath component will be z3 square by z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square till zm square and it goes on so we can conclude that if the contribution of any multipath component is larger or we could say that if the snr in a particular multipath component is higher then the then that alpha m value would be higher and if the contribution or snr will be lower then the value of alpha m will also be lower so the value of alpha m is going to lie between 0 and 1 and uh, it also holds good if alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 till alpha m is going to be equal to 1 so the normalization is also quite important just because we need to evaluate the actual signal uh, z through which we are going to evaluate the transmitted symbol so the correlator output are combined to achieve the improved communication reliability as well as uh, performance so we uh, we are going to improve the reliability and how we are going to improve the performance that and all we have already discussed uh, we are basically taking the average of uh, these multipath components in order to capture the actual information and one more important point here you have to remember is we are not only taking the average we are basically taking the weight average so obviously those multipath components which are at the receiver side we are going to have larger snr uh, they, uh, they are going to have uh, much larger weight so at their contribution uh, the higher in order uh, so in their contribution uh, it would be higher in order to get actual signal reception so this is how we are going to basically add some reliability at the reception so weighing network is used to provide the linear combination of the correlator output for a bit decision that uh, this is also we have uh, discussed that is how we are going to linearly combine the particular signal we have uh, basically used an used an uh, adder at your uh, block structure so how the linear combination will be going to take place so that combined signal would have been given as uh, z prime and this is the formula that is z prime is equal to summation m is equal to 1 to m alpha m z m so z prime is the received signal after elimination of the multipath effect so how we have reduced or eliminated this uh, multipath component uh, via providing the weighing methods of high SNR value, we have given basically high weight for lower SNR value or we could also say that due to bad channel characteristics, if certain component is having low SNR, then we are basically omitting or avoiding the contribution of that particular thing or we are basically giving the low value to its weight and we, and we have also incorporated those multiple components which is having higher reliability or higher SNR. So after receiving this Z prime, now we have to perform this D spreading. Since we are uh, using CDMA systems, which is nothing but the spread spectrum systems. So at the receiver side, we have to perform the D spreading operation. And also in order to obtain the symbol value Z, which could be transmitted from the transmitter side. 
So now the bit decision is uh, bit decision is performed on the basis of the z value. That is, if z is greater than zero, symbol one will be detected, and if z is less than zero, symbol zero will be detected. So this is how basically we are uh, uh, going to obtain the transmitter symbol from the transmitter and the receiver. So coming to the applications of rake receivers, rake receivers are used in CDMA and WCDMA as an efficient way of multipath signal reception where several receptors are able to reconstruct the signal with different time codes, amplitude and phase. So rake receivers are mainly used in CDMA and WCDMA radio devices like uh, mobile phones, wireless LAN, etc. So these are the advantages as well as the disadvantages associated with rake receiver. So the coming to advantages, uh, they have improved SNR and improved performance. Since we are using weight sum and we are taking the contribution of all multipath components, so obviously we are uh, going to have improved SNR at the receiver. If the SNR is high or SNR is improved, then the performance will also be increased. Or also we could say that if SNR is higher, the bit error rate is lower. So these are the advantages associated with rake receiver. Then coming to the disadvantages, the disadvantages are increased cost, size and complexity. Since uh, in our block structure, we have already seen that it is using multiple correlators associated with your multipath. So if we are using multiple correlators, obviously the cost is going to increase. And since uh, we are using multiple correlators, obviously the size is also going to get increased. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, rake receiver. So this is what about uh, rake receiver. Thank you all.